It's 3.15 on Monday afternoon. Happy Halloween. Be careful out there, you trick-or-treaters. Ethan and I, we're gonna get tricked, I think. Uh, that's what I think. The, uh, did you look at the temperature? I think it's like 73. 73, um, not good. I mean, it was frost on the ground this morning, so I know in this valley, it does get cool faster, so we've got some hope, but we're just gonna go a real quick run, 15 minutes from the pole building here. We'll be in that uh, tree stand that's, uh, what would you say, quarter of a mile max from here. Uh, it's right over the top of the scrape. It's where that nice 10 pointer came past uh, about a week ago, I guess, that we were in there. And uh, we are a little bit of a late start today. Uh, seems like every day we have some excuse, but you know, the builders just finished up yesterday. We tried to get everything we done we could to make that living quarters livable, but uh, we still have a few more things we have to do there and we're scrambling to catch up. Uh, plus we stayed up pretty late last night getting the, the Monday episode out where Ethan uh, killed that great big deer. So if you haven't seen it, go back and watch the last episode. You'll be impressed with the young man. Um, the wind is gonna be coming across this valley, but I do think by the shape of it, it's gonna funnel it down. So that's kind of what our hope is because the next few days the forecast is for a south wind and that definitely won't work in there. So this will be our last chance to hunt that spot in probably three or four or five days. And then uh, this is that spot where that blind eyed buck is living more or less. We think that, I think he's either, you know, on the two ridges on either side of the valley and then down in the valley itself. So we're gonna run up in there and give this a try. thing I don't like about this valley is that ridge and this ridge are really open. That one and that one are pretty thick. So any deer bedded in those spots aren't going to see us, but any deer bedded on these ridges are going to see us. So I've got to do some work here to make it thicker um, up on these two spots so I can come and go out of this valley without being seen. Since these deer are working so close to the stand, we're not gonna set our stuff on the ground. So we're gonna hang them from steps until the last guy comes up. So that way, if you lay stuff on the ground, that's what they're gonna smell. They probably won't smell where our feet touch the ground, but if we lay our gear down, they're gonna smell that spot for sure. a lot better down in here than I expected for temperature. Because we're down in this valley, we're out of the sun, we're down in the shadows here. That helps quite a bit. But uh, also the breeze is coming right down the valley, which is perfect. And, uh, but I do think though that the spots where the deer are bedded up on those ridges are gonna stay warm for quite a while. I mean, I'm not really uncomfortable wearing you know, pretty heavy clothes right now. Granted, we didn't walk very far, but, uh, so, I mean, it, it feels a lot better than what you would think for 73 degrees. Shockingly, the buck that I'm after came out about 10 minutes ago, crossed the upper end of the valley, and uh, looked like he was kind of angling this way, but we haven't seen him since. 
So I'm thinking that maybe he just crossed the valley and went up onto one of these other ridges just looking for does that might be bedded in those spots. But he was probably 200 yards, 250 yards up the valley. But we've still got almost two and a half hours left. So he was definitely out early on a warm day. So, you know, you can say what you like about the temperature. When the time is right, you need to be in the tree. Hopefully before the evening ends here, uh, he'll come down into this valley. I would think that he would because this seems to be where the deer gather. There's beans here and there's some winter rye planted in the beans and I think a lot of the deer in this area feed down in here. So hopefully before the end of the evening, we'll see him back down in this valley. That blind eye buck is on the upper end of this field. He's been out there for about 15 or 20 minutes chasing does around. I was kind of hoping that when he realized that none of those does were interested in him, that he would give up and come down here and work these scrapes, but he hasn't. He's still just standing out there. About uh, just under 200 yards, I'd say. A lot of time left. Boy, there's at least an hour and a half. So uh, even if he doesn't come down right away, there's some hope that before the evening's over, he'll come down and check out these scrapes.
Ah, ah. No, 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 no. Okay. Got him. He's laying right there. He came out, that's one of those does, he came out at four o'clock on a 70 degree day and uh, I don't know, I just had a hunch about today for some reason, even though it was hot. We had a lot of stuff we were doing back at the cabin there. It just felt so good to get out and I can't believe that. <laughs> he came. He was chasing those does around, and then finally he got maybe bored with that chase because they obviously weren't in estrus. And then this little buck came out below us, and we didn't film it because these does above us were starting to catch on to something. So we were really careful about that little buck, but he, uh, he came up here, and of course that got the attention of that big one right away. So it was, you know, at, at the end, it was pretty easy. I mean, he was only, I don't know, 18 yards away, but uh, just getting to that point was the hard part. Gosh. You just don't know. You know, I mean, we talk about weather all the time, but uh, when the rut is on, you just gotta hunt. <laughs> I'm gonna climb down and go look at him. He's just laying right there, 50, 60 yards away. So that's pretty cool. First buck on the new farm. That was the biggest deer that I knew of. I didn't know of any bigger ones on this property. He was he was blind in his right eye. So the side that we were on, he would have been able to see us. Too bad he didn't come by on the other side. <laughs> so it's time to go down and take a look at him. Pointing right up to my stand. <laughs> it's not very far. <laughs> He's a good deer. He's a nice buck. He was a uh, he was the king of the roost around here. I think he had at least these three ridges in this bottom for his domain. But I started getting pictures of this deer. Uh, let's see, it would have been right away when I started running cameras in September, but I was clear up on top and maybe oh, a good ways away from here. And he wasn't hitting those cameras until about midnight. So I thought that he wasn't living anywhere close to it, but he was always, it always seemed like he was coming from this direction. So once I started moving more into this area looking for him, then I found him pretty consistently. And uh, I guess I didn't figure the hunt would be quite this easy though. I've hunted twice on this farm, two times, and I've taken Jordan out, I think three times. And uh, both of my sits have been in this little tree right down the, at the bottom of the valley here. So the second time in here, second time on my farm, my new farm, I killed the, what I think is the best buck on the place. So not to say there's not others. And, and we have a long season now to see if we can find another one. But uh, it's pretty cool to have the plan come together. We came in here specifically trying to find this deer. And we got fortunate and blessed enough uh, to pull it off tonight. Halloween buck, we thought we were gonna get tricked, but instead we got treated. I was just telling Ethan, I think it was three days ago that he killed his deer and he hasn't been in a tree since. So he's been in the tree two times in a row now with a camera in his hand filming nice bucks getting killed. So that's pretty cool.
pretty good, pretty good track record. So I'm gonna get my tag on him quick and then I'll go get Jordan. We got plenty of daylight left. So it'd be fun to run down there and get her and come back up and load the deer up and kind of make a, a little bit more of a, a group recovery out of it. Killed him already. Really? Yeah. What? <laughs> the one you were after? Yeah. We've already killed him, tagged him, done the recovery. Yeah. So let's go from the Well, scene. congrats. Hey. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. Yep, thank you. So yeah, put Wow. I mean you probably just throw a little maybe throw one of Ed's Ev's jackets on and come on up. Okay. And, wow. Yeah, that's pretty funny. That is really funny. I killed him, like, I shot him like he was coming down this side of it. Okay. Right in, like, a couple rows into the beam. I shot him there and he just ran right up here. Did he come over. all the way in from down there? Because he the thought he was end. living up there and right. coming down off the ridge, right? He came right? from the very far end, up the valley, as far as you can see. Wow. But, uh, yeah, he was he was out there for, boy, at least an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, before I killed him, so. Because you said he, you saw him at, like, four? Four, yeah. Yeah. Of all nights, too, you wouldn't have thought that he'd be out running around no. now. I mean, no. I don't know a lot about it, but I wouldn't yeah. have guessed it. Well, and, and Ethan and I were talking about that. It's like sometimes you just got to throw the weather out the window when yeah. it's the right time of the year. But, uh, yeah, let's go over and look at him. That's awesome. <laughs> Before the stinky brothers eat him. Yeah, that one's <laughs> over there pointing at him like he knows like he has any use, <laughs> contributed anything. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, it was an awesome hunt. And the way he came in, you know, chasing those does and then the small buck. Yeah. You'll have to watch it. We'll pull it up on the computer when we get back in the cabin there and you'll get a kick out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's sweet. Yeah. So that was the one I was after. Well, you guys are tagged out early. What do <laughs> yeah. you do the rest of the year? Well, it's your turn now. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of Jordan shooters. Yeah. There weren't too many bill shooters, now there's one less. Yep, another one bites the dust. There might have only been, well, there were two or three at the most. So, unless something else shows up. White's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Day Six Arrows, Redneck Blinds, Code of Silence Apparel, Fuse Archery, and Hoyt. Well, we are packing up. It's like 80 degrees, so I probably won't need these, but can't be too safe. Sweatshirt. This is the key to success um, from Menards. Sherpa lines, little jacket thing. I hope it gets cold just so I have an excuse to wear it because that's the single most comfortable piece of clothing I've ever owned in my life. So Menards, if you see this, we can talk sponsorship. I'm open to that. Uh, hot, 70 some degrees. And you got up to like 78 earlier. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah. It'll cool down, but not like it did last night in the valleys. Uh, you know, down in the valleys, it's, it's cooler because the shade and then the cool air drops down in there, but we're gonna be up on top. We don't have anything that sets up for a south wind down in this, in this whole end of the farm where the valleys are at. So uh, we'll just drive around, come in on the north end, and uh, hopefully get your first deer. Let's get it done. Go Winky team. Team Winky. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're down to our last 20 minutes. Those fawns are still hanging around. I really thought we'd see something else. Uh, I really thought that once they got out there and got comfortable, that some other deer was gonna be passing through and just pop right back in here and join them. But I guess it's still possible. I mean, it's a long, you know, 20 minutes is a long time, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna call this our final interview for today's hunt. And uh, just right there, we threw a dodge pretzel at the one. It was like 10 feet from the blind, if that. Uh, that's been our entertainment for the evening. But if anything shows up here in these last 20 minutes, we'll break away and uh, show you that. Otherwise, uh, we're gonna be making some bacon wrapped uh, loins, tender loins on the grill as soon as we get back from hunting. So I'm actually looking forward to that a little bit more than the hunt itself. <laughs> uh, but I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't think we'll be hunting. I've got to go get my acorns. So finally the, the order is ready. And I've got a whole bunch of acorns to pick up. So I think that's going to be tomorrow. But uh, we'll be back hunting again pretty soon. Jordan's got a tag that's just burning a hole in my pocket. Burning a hole. So uh, keep watching and we'll keep hunting. So this is from that buck I shot last night. Uh, bacon wrapped tenderloin marinated in uh, A1 steak sauce. So you can't go wrong. We had them uh, lined up on some of the stuff we were doing with that. It's Thursday morning. And uh, we just got back to the farm. I had to run to central Iowa, southern Iowa to pick up my acorns. There are 50 bushels and uh, I needed 75 for the whole 15 acres. So we're going to work on 10 acres today. We're supposed to get two inches of rain tonight, so it should be perfect. If you look at these, uh, you can see that the little roots are starting to pop out of the white oak acorns. They're just little short ones right now, but if we don't get these in the ground and covered up, uh, that, they're going to dry out and then these seeds aren't going to be valid. So this is perfect timing. Get them out, disc them in, uh, rains come in tonight, and then that should pack the dirt in around them and keep them moist. They should germinate right away while well, they've already started. And then we should have oak trees. Uh, it's easy to get red oak because they germinate in the spring. So there's no stress on, on getting them like into the ground perfectly. But the white's a lot trickier because they're fall germinators. So that's our project for today. Uh, don't know if there's any hunting in our near future. I don't see it. Uh, we've got a fair amount of time invested or will have getting these seeds in and then it's supposed to be two inches of rain over the next 24 hours uh, starting tonight. So I don't see us hunting tomorrow either, but we're gonna need to recuperate. We've been running, burning the candle on both ends. So a couple of days break might not be too bad for us right now. And then we'll chip in again just as soon as the uh, weather starts to cool back down. As soon as they get exposed to that sun and that dry air, that's when this clock starts ticking and uh, we need to get them covered. So let me, I think before we get too crazy here and get them all out there, I'm gonna make sure I can get the other tractor started so we know that once we get them spread, we can disc them in. I've got an assortment. I've got some, gosh, he went through the list with me and it was a, quite a wild variety of, or I guess diversity of, of acorns. I've got uh, chestnut white oak, swamp white oak, white oak, red oak, chinkapin, post, six different kinds of oak. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot there's bur oak too. And then I've got these walnuts. We're only doing, I guess that's not a walnut, that's oak, but I'm doing uh, only one bushel per acre on the walnuts and roughly five bushels per acre on the oak. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try to spread it out so that we're getting, you know, just not a monoculture. I don't want all uh, white oak in one patch and then all red oak in another. I want them blended so that if they're, if there's one variety that does well this year and the other one doesn't, we don't have you know spots where there's just nothing. So I've got 
45 bushels. So I think this is about four acres. So 45, I'm supposed to get probably 20 bushels on here, 16 to 20. See, I can't believe that that didn't flow. See, it's got that little hole in it. So this is the little radical. So that one's already starting to dry. So I don't know if, that, if that's even a viable seed anymore. I mean, this one's still okay. See how it's still kind of peppy? Perky? <laughs> so I forgot that we've got black oak, too. I wasn't excited about black oak because it's not like a preferred one for the deer, but having that diversity is going to be pretty nice here because you don't always know what's going to grow every year. You know, some years you're going to get really good on white or bread or whatever, but now we've got eight, eight different varieties of oak. So that'd be kind of cool to see which ones do well and which ones don't. We got the first round of uh, acorns planted. Uh, I think it was like five acres, maybe five-ish. Um, I was gonna tell you guys a joke about oak trees, but I changed my mind because it was a corny one. The morale's getting a little low with the troops here. I think we've got 10 acres done and about I think I've got enough acorns for about two or three more so I've got 12 to 13 acres of the 15 covered the guy was gonna get me some more seed uh, but it's a lot of work um, they keep coming up with these ideas of inventions why don't you get something that spins and does this or they're, they're trying to get out of hand broadcasting these acorns and, and uh, walnuts and I don't blame them so we've got just a little bit left, uh, then it'll be dark, I think, by the time we're done. So uh, rain tonight should be good. I mean, I think we're doing the right thing. Uh, I think we've given these acorns the absolute best chance we possibly can of producing oak trees. So if we thought the morale was low three hours ago, you should see it now. It's at the bottom of the ocean. But we did get the acorns in. We got. Like I said, I think 12 or 13 acres planted. That was uh, pushing 60, 55, somewhere in there, uh, bushels. And then uh, 15 bushels of walnut. Two inches of rain tonight. And then we should see oak trees in April. So I'm excited about that. It's a lot of work. People don't appreciate sometimes, I think, what goes into making a a deer hunting farm really good. Um, planting food plots is one thing, but the habitat is a lot more work. And I think it's more critical because it's pretty easy to catch up on the food, but it's really hard to catch up on the habitat. So that's why we did this first. We didn't wait until it was convenient or wait until next year. Um, we bit it off right here on November 3rd. So uh, go through a day of rain and then we'll start hunting. I'm looking forward to that, getting Jordan back out. Um, I think she's eager to to uh, get her first deer with a bow. So exciting times. We'll keep you up, up on the, on the uh, progress that we have here and, and we appreciate you watching. It's Sunday afternoon, about uh, 1.30 and we're getting ready to go out for our first hunt since, uh, let's see, okay, Jordan hunted the day after I killed my buck on Monday, right? You hunted on Tuesday? Yeah. We haven't hunted since Tuesday. Is that right? Yeah. So we went back to Solon. Oh, we, that's right. We had to get acorns. Yep. Then we had, we planted them. Then we had two days of straight rain. We were, we were sick. We were kind of sick. So we haven't done a whole lot of hunting this past week. So we're going to make up for it this coming week. But uh, we're going to leave you right here just with the fact that we're heading out. So we'll come back again next week and uh, see how this coming week goes. We're going to really focus on it now. We don't have any other projects that we have to do. Uh, we can spend all of our effort uh, getting Jordan her first year with a bow. Well, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you right back here again next week.
for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big. That's right.